Okay, let's get started on 7.3. Uh, functions involving E. So before we start using E, we should know what E is. Uh, so we'll take a look at that. We're going to graph exponential functions involving E. Uh, and then we'll learn about continuously compounded interest, which is a common application of E. So let's find out, what is E? So to talk about what E is, I'm just going to take this expression here. All right. And uh, what we're going to do here is let x get really big. Uh, and the, the way that we write that in math is to say the limit as x approaches infinity of this expression. So what happens as we let x get really large? Well, let's use our, our intuition first, and then we'll take a look at what it actually is. Uh, so first, let's look at, at this guy right here, uh, 1 over x. So what we're doing is letting x become incredibly, unimaginably, unfathomably large. Uh, just the biggest you could ever possibly imagine it being, and then just multiply that number by a billion. You know, just really, really big. So if I take 1 and divide it by a number that's incredibly large, uh, what kind of a number would this be? 1 divided by an incredibly large number. Um, well, 1 divided into an incredibly large number of pieces, each of those pieces is going to be incredibly small. Um, so this is pretty much nothing. This is pretty much zero. So uh, one plus pretty much nothing. Well, it seems like right in here, this is going to be one. OK, that's what it seems like. Uh, and then come up here, we have this thing which, which we're taking to be one, pretty much, because this is pretty much nothing. Um, and we're raising it to an incredibly large number. That's what x is going to be. It's going to be an incredibly large number. So take one, what we're taking to be one, and raise it to an incredibly large number. And it seems like. Uh, we should wind up with 1 uh, to see what we really get, or just to see if, if we're right. Uh, we'll take out our calculators. OK. So uh, we'll go into the y equals and put that expression into the calculator. Right. So 1 plus 1 divided by x and raise that to the x power. Okay, um, And we want to know what happens to this expression as x gets really, really big. So I'm going to go into the table. The table is a good way to see those things. So let's see. I, I put a 1 in there, and we have 2. Um, uh, I'm expecting this to eventually kind of taper off to 1. right? Eventually, as x gets really big, and 1 over x gets really small, and we raise it to a really big number, we should be seeing it go down to 1 eventually. Um, so we put in a 1, we get 2. Go to 2, we get a 2.25, and so on. Let's put in a number that's pretty big. You know, 100 is pretty big. Uh, let's try 1,000. 10,000. 100,000. OK, and then just. Just take it way out there. OK, well, what I expected to see happen, what my intuition told me, is that that thing was going to go to 1, except it doesn't. It hasn't gone down at all, actually. It's gone up and up and up and gone uh, to uh, these last three entries that we had. It didn't even change at all. It just stayed at 2.7183. Of course, you know, if we went to more decimal places, it would be changing. but OK, I mean, it's, it's not doing at all what I thought it was going to do. Um, and that seems very strange to me. Yeah, it just keeps. So what actually happens is it's, it's hard to understand. It's uh, kind of an unintuitive or counterintuitive thing. It, it doesn't do what we thought it was going to do. It actually approaches this number, uh, at least in the calculator that we saw. 2.7183. It's actually 2.7182. Um, I think 8 would be next. Uh, but 
this is right here, this right here, is what E is. Uh, it's this decimal that goes on forever, it doesn't repeat, uh, and we call that a, a transcendental number. This is E. This right here, this crazy decimal thing is E. E is just a number. Okay, so that's the most important thing to remember when thinking about E. E is a number, okay? Um, it's not a variable that you're going to solve for. It's not uh, anything other than just a number, kind of like pi. Pi is a number that uh, has a, a, a letter that stands for it all the time, but it always is the same number, and this is always the same number to this number. Okay? So uh, one quick lesson to learn about E is, you know, say E squared times E to the third. Well, E is just a number. E is the base of this exponent. So if we're going to combine, combine these together, we would add the exponents because we're multiplying these things together. Be E to the fifth. If I was taking E squared and taking that to the fifth power, well, the exponent of E is going to be 5 times 2, so E to the tenth. Uh, e to the third over E squared, that's going to be e to the 3 minus 2, so that's going to be e. It's all the same. When I'm manipulating expressions with e, I just treat it like any other number. Um, okay, so that's the first little application of e. Um, and we'll do more uh, exact problems in the, the practice problems, but just for example, if y equals e to the x <coughs> is that exponential growth or decay, well, remember that if I want to decide whether or not this is exponential growth or decay, we know it's exponential because the variable is in the exponent. That's what makes it exponential. Um, if I want to decide whether or not it's growth or decay, then I have to just look at this number that's being raised to the power, the variable power, the x power. Uh, is that number bigger than 1? Then it's growth. If it's between 0 and 1, then it's decay. Uh, so is e, this number, is it more than 1, or is it between 0 and 1? It's more than 1. It's 2.7183 and, and so on and so on. Uh, so since it's more than 1, it's exponential growth. Now the other way that you'll most often see e in an exponential function is y equals e to the negative x. Okay. Um, so is this growth or is this decay? Well, Let's look at it a little bit of a different way. So let's say that this is e to the negative 1 to the x. Now, you should be able to see that this is the same as this because you know, I'm raising e to the negative 1 and raising that to the x. So I multiply these together, I get e to the negative x. Okay? So this is the same as this. What's e to the negative 1? What do I do with a negative exponent? Well, I put, it's in the numerator right now, so I'm going to put it in the denominator, and it'll become positive. 1 over e, 1 over e to the first. Okay, so it's the same. So now we have something to the x like we're used to seeing. So this number that's being raised to the x, is it bigger than 1? Is it uh, between 0 and 1? Which one is it? Well, it's 1 over 2.7183. 1 divided by 2.7183. You do the math on your calculator if you like, but you'll find out it's between 0 and 1, so this would be decay. So the big deciding factor when you see e and it's raised to a negative power, it's decay. And e to the x, e to the positive x, is growth. Okay? So uh, that's a quick look at uh, those things. Now, remember our talking about uh, in previous videos about uh, continuously compounded interest, or about just compounded interest, actually. We're going to talk about continuously compounded interest right now. Uh, so compound interest. Remember that with compound interest, the more often it was compounded, the better it was for me, the person putting my money in the bank. Um, you know, if it was compounded once a year, well, that was good. It was better than, better than simple interest. Um, if it was compounded uh, every six months, that was even a little better for me. And if it was compounded every three months, that was even better. And if it was compounded every week, every day, every hour, every second, the more often it was compounded, the better it was for me, the more money I made. Uh, so what would be the, the most ideal situation? Uh, how often would I like it to be compounded? 
but I'd like it to be compounded as often as possible. Um, what, how often is that? Is that every second, every half a second, every quarter of a second? Um, whatever that smallest amount of time you could possibly imagine. Um, every sliver of a second, as tiny a sliver of a second, the function that that gives us the the amount of money. Actually, we should use this a the amount of money uh, after so many years of continuously compounding that interest. Every sliver of a second, it's compounded. Every sliver of a second, they give you a sliver of that interest rate. Uh, then that is the principal times e, the number e that we just learned about, to the rt, where r is the rate of interest that they're giving you, and t is the number of years that have gone by. So this function right here, say, just for example, I were to invest $1,000, and they were to give me an interest rate of 3%, so 0 0.03, and I were to invest this for five years, e, that's, that's the big decider right there. E, continuously compounded interest. Uh, every sliver of a second, they give me a sliver of this interest, and they compound it. Every s just tiniest piece of a second you could possibly imagine. So let's take a look and also see how to use our calculators with E. All right, so we want to just enter this. This is the function that's going to tell me how much money I have after five years uh, of 3% of interest continuously compounded. Okay. Um, so we want to put this expression in there, 1,000 times e to the 0 0.03 times 5. Now your calculator already knows about e, it, it's, it is able to use it already, okay? So 1,000 times, where do I find e? Well, e is right here. e is above this button right here, the ln button. We'll learn how to use this button in the future. Uh, but right now, you just press second, E, and it already raises E to a power. It's asking you what power do you want to raise E to, and you tell it 0 0.03 times 5. That's what you want to do. Uh, press enter. Apparently, we're going to have $1,161.83. Okay. So... Over five years, you made $161.83. Uh, so, there you go. Uh, so, in the sample problems videos, we'll look at some specific uh, graphing problems, a couple of problems involving uh, compound interest. Um, and so, I will see you there.